Mm. We need to lead the way because I feel like culturally we've become so bad at having real hard conversations with each other without canceling each other. Right? Mm. And so I thought it was a cool opportunity to have really intelligent people, really artistic people who all have faith in the Lord to come together around different topics and ideas and and begin be able to share those things openly. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pursuit. Jeff Hutchin here with John Sporov, and you see we've got a full studio today. Some guests maybe that you recognize that we'll introduce to you again here in just a few moments. Before we get to them, though, let's talk a little bit about those that are making this possible for us today. And today, this episode is being brought to you by the Trinity Team Real Estate Co. These guys are incredible. They have over 60 years, Johnny, of combined commercial real estate experience what and eric what doesn't I? even look 60. i mean that's a crazy thing about it <laughs> yeah it's, i know i don't know how that's possible carries his age really <laughs> really well he must have had a facelift or yeah, something something but no that that's a family-owned business there of course that's been passed down through generations and they have some people in that company that have been doing this for an extremely long time and uh so this is a this is a team that's built on incredible integrity mm -hmm. they're 100 percent focused on your needs not those commission payments and they really do. They seek to create lifetime clients and lifetime relationships with the people they work with. Uh, this is a faith-based organization that absolutely can take care of just about anything real estate for you guys. If you're mm -hmm. looking in the commercial side, HOA management, investment, whatever it might be, buying that next home, uh, this is the group you want to turn to. So reach out to Eric Fritzke and his team over at Trinity. You can find them at trinityteamrealestateco.com. So thanks to Eric. Well, John, I'm excited about today. We've got uh, Rachel and Dave Amadei with us again. You know, last time, if you watched... Did you say uh, it right? Yes, you okay. got it. I mean, it's He's, taken like 18 times. I know, just like four months Thanks of practice. Thanks for calling that out. I appreciate it. Four that. months of practice every day in the mirror. He, I mean, <laughs> who, needs, who needs enemy when you got an accountability partner exactly. like this? Right? Like right, on your right on the spot, make <laughs> yeah. you look bad in front of the entire globe. Oh, you look good. No, <laughs> no, man, we are excited you guys are back. Last time we were here, we talked a little bit about worship, the heart of worship, and mm -hmm. you guys sang for us. and. Mm -hmm incredibly gifted but some really cool things have developed since then oh yeah which i think we all had a sense that maybe there might be something a little bit deeper that god was doing in our relationship and yeah. uh that's been revealed john you want to talk a little bit about what we're doing with these yeah guys? so dave and rachel are taking over the uh, contributor program that may be so when i say contributors i'm not sure that everybody understands what exactly what that is but we're going to dive into that topic today yeah. and uh, and talk about because you know, as as much we just celebrated a year anniversary yeah. of this podcast, didn't we? But from day one, we've known this is not about you and I, is it? No, we're really we really want to expand this thing. Yeah, and uh, what God God has clearly shown us is that the pursuit is just a platform. That's it. A platform um, that allows others to kind of share their voice or their gift or their anointing. It doesn't have to be the spoken voice. It doesn't have to be singing. There's a lot of other things. And so when we, we talked to you guys initially, it was about this idea that, you know what, we want to begin to expand the platform into music. Obviously, that's an, an obvious gift that you guys both have. But as we unpack that, God began to show that maybe it's your involvement's a little bit bigger than that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it over to you guys to pick up the story from there and how when we sat down in that conference room oh, a couple months ago and began to unpack mm -hmm. this with you guys, what, what did you begin to see and hear and what resonated in your heart? We can start there. Well, I think for me, this concept had been on my heart for years. I had been thinking just with culture where it was at. I'd been involved in churches for 15 years. Um, I realized there's not a lot of places, number one, for Christian thinkers and artists where they're not kind of put inside a box or bounded by whichever area of the industry they might be in. So for us, experience in music, the music industry kind of exposed us to this, that you know, if you're a Christian artist, you really only get to sing Christian songs for the most part. And if you're a secular artist, they don't want to hear about your faith. And so for an artist that's a believer, that can feel really limiting. Mm. And I, I always shared, you know, faith-based songs anyways. But, of course, it's never the thing that anyone was going to go out and promote or certain podcasts or certain news organizations. They, they didn't want to hear those songs necessarily. And so um, I loved this concept of supporting artists to be their whole selves and having a platform for that mm. because there's not enough of that. Um, but also just this concept that the body of Christ needs to unify. 
And the cool thing about the contributor program to me was that we have a diverse group of people and a diverse group of thinkers mm -hmm. and that we could have conversations where we disagree. We could have viewpoints that might be different, but we're willing to sit down and open ourselves up and be vulnerable to those conversations and to share what we see in our perspective and our worldview and our truth. And Christians need to be better than, than the world at that. Like mm -hmm. we need to lead the way because I feel like culturally we've become so bad at having real hard conversations with each other without canceling each other. Right? Mm. And so I thought it was a cool opportunity to have really intelligent people, really artistic people who all have faith in the Lord to come together around different topics and ideas and, and be, be able to share those things openly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree with you. Um, and I wanna add too that I think we've become very comfortable and I don't think it's the time to be. I think it's um, things are so uneasy and we need to talk about them. Mm -hmm. And we're encouraging that with our contributors. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a very neat thing. I definitely agree with you about the cancel culture aspect, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And art has an interesting way. I heard somebody once say that um, art is man's attempt to reach God. And that always stuck with me. Mm -hmm. There's a classic, I think it's... Um, yeah, it's Michelangelo, the finger of God and man, mm -hmm. almost touching. That's what this feels like. It feels like we're giving a platform to somebody to to dive into the places of themselves where it's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're going to try to to work this out, and we're going to be right there. Mm -hmm. You know, as I think about even how Jesus just kind of blew up the paradigm of religion mm -hmm. right now to the to the watchful person to the discerning person it's clear that he was fulfilling it wasn't he wasn't destroying he was fulfilling but to kind of the general casual observer right he was really kind of blowing up the paradigms He's calling him out why how do we get in this place where it feels like the expectation is, well, you're Christians, and so we are homogenous in our thinking. We're not allowed to disagree with one another because if, if we do, you're out of here, Jack, or, or I'm out, one yeah. or the other. Yeah. Um, or, as you pointed out, we keep that conversation at that surface level because to go any deeper mm -hmm. reveals weakness, reveals um, shallowness, mm -hmm. right, reveals that oh, maybe this, this argument doesn't totally hold up and I haven't given it that much thought, mm -hmm. reveals maybe there's not life there, right? So mm -hmm. where did, how did we fall into that place of being homogenous? I like that word? It's homogenous. a great word. It's homogenous. Perfect. I, word. I looked it up this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your milk. <laughs> it's the yeah. word of the Sorry. week. <laughs> yeah, that's 2%. <laughs> but how did, we, how did we end up here? Well, I, I think that in order to have those conversations, um, you have to be vulnerable. Yeah. And I, I really do believe true followers of Jesus should be better at it because you already know, if you know the Lord, you already know you don't know everything, right? You're already in a position of humility. You're worshiping this God that is so incredible and loving, but also so unknowable and so much more wise than we are. And every time you get a new piece of information, you're like, gosh, I wish I knew that five years ago, you know, or I mean, yeah. there's a humbling aspect to worshiping God and to knowing the Lord. And so um, I felt like we have to bring that into our conversations with one another and just start with, maybe I don't know everything. Here's what I have learned and, and be able to stack it up. And we have, uh, those hard conversations are so necessary though. How can you pursue truth? if you're not willing to be challenged mm -hmm. um, and to challenge others. Mm -hmm. And it's not judgmental, you know, it's not about being right, it's not about winning. We are in a time where truth is more important than ever to me in my lifetime. And whatever that pursuit is, I just wanna know it. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanna know what it is because the truth is the thing that sets you free. Mm -hmm. And, you, and so we need it. We need that truth. And if if you're living in a bubble and you're unchallenged, I just don't think you're going to get the full picture. Yeah, and I, and I think the fact of the matter, too, is is our perspective is limited, right? Mm -hmm. You have a certain perspective. I have a certain perspective. And it's not that it's wrong. It's just limited. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so what's, what's so cool about the Holy Spirit that resides within each follower is that it, that is the access to truth. Mm -hmm. and, and each of us holds a different perspective into that, right? Mm -hmm. he, we're all on a different path. Mm -hmm. We're all in a different place in this journey. 
And so things that, that I can learn from John is, is maybe something I've never considered or never thought of because I don't have his perspective mm-hmm. and I don't have his right. personality. And so when we can create a platform like this where you have an extremely diverse group of people, mm-hmm. and I don't even, when I say diverse, yeah. I don't even mean by color of skin. Mm-hmm. I mean each one of us is creatively and uniquely made. There's not mm-hmm. a single person on the planet that's ever been made before that's like me mm-hmm. or like you. And so if that is true, which it is, the Word of God says that, that means that you have a perspective that is so unique that I need that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need your perspective because you're going to provide me something I couldn't have got otherwise. And so that's really the heartbeat behind this platform with our contributors is we're saying, okay, first of all, not only is it a perspective with the spoken word, because not everyone is gifted with the ability to orate and speak and teach. like I, I am not, if you put a piece of clay in front of me with one of those potter's wheel, it, it would be a mess. It would turn out to be just like it started, a big yeah. clump of nothing, right? But in the right hands, mm-hmm. it turns into a masterpiece, right? And so we wanna provide a platform for those individuals mm-hmm. that work with their hands, that, that work with their eyes and their skills and their senses and their painting and whatever it might, dancing, right? Mm-hmm. And we want to provide a platform for those people to express their perspective on what the heart of God is all about at the end of the day. That's really what we're looking for, right. isn't it? Yeah, Agreed. no, absolutely. I mean, you look throughout history, some of the greatest things ever made have been dedicated to God. Mm. The church was a great influence on early classical composers and some of the best paintings ever made, Sistine Chapel, right? Mm-hmm. And those, I mean, to me, those are, those are it. Yeah. and why why we have diluted I'm not sure that's a good yeah. question yeah. but it's it's not right and it's not we shouldn't be doing it you know I, you know what I think one of the problems is this may surprise you this perspective is that I think I think the spirit of religion has squelched us and here's what mm-hmm. I mean by that um, for so long we've said there's just a certain group of people that have insight into yeah. truth mm-hmm. and they're called religious leaders they were called pastors right And we put these men and these women and these teachers up on the stage to bring forth truth. And and what does it communicate without really thinking about it? What it communicates is they're the ones that have access to truth, not you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, let me tell you what truth is. Mm -hmm. And most people feel incredibly inadequate to pursue truth, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not theologically trained. I don't understand the Mm -hmm. Bible. I'm not as smart as Rachel is. I'm not whatever. I didn't go to this this school or, or whatever whatever your deal might be. But the fact of the matter is this, each of us, and I already said this once, each of us has the Holy Spirit in us. Mm-hmm. That is truth. Mm-hmm. And what he says now is abide in me, and what will I do? I will reveal my truth to you, mm-hmm. right? And so part of what I'm really excited about with the, the contributor program is we are gonna f- free some people up mm-hmm. that maybe have never had the chance to share their perspective. Right. Right. to share their truth mm-hmm. in a community. And here's what's cool. In a community that naturally will create a sense of accountability. Right. So it's not just like, what's your version of truth? Mm-hmm. We know our version of truth. Our version of truth is based right here. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. the cool thing about it is as we step into this together and as people now have the opportunity to express their perspective on things, there's a level of strengthening. There's a level of iron sharpening iron. And there's also going to be a really cool sense of accountability that can and will occur within this community as well. Could you guys Absolutely. kind of talk about that? Well, I was just thinking about the verse that talks about, you know, you'll find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Mm-hmm. And if we cede all of our seeking power over to a pastor, are we seeking him with our mm. whole heart? And that, I think, really is the call, is to know that if the Holy Spirit is with you, resides in you, if you're abiding in the Lord, He wants to reveal Himself to you personally, not just when you're at church, like every day. Mm. He has a truth for you every day. And that He wants you to love His Word. When He wants you to read this letter He's written to you and to open it up and receive you know, His principles. And I do think, I think people don't, feel that a lot of the time. I think they feel disconnected from the word. I just need the pastor to tell me. I just need, you know, I need somebody else to tell me, but God wants to have a personal relationship with you where if you sat down with him, he's like, I'm going to show you something mm-hmm. today. And I, I, he has a ministry for each of these people, right? Yeah. I love yeah. that. You have a ministry. And so you're called to seek the Lord, to know him, 
to be a light and mm. to have a ministry. And I think that's one thing about the contributor program too that I love is these people are ministers to me. They're they're important in their communities. They're people who are going to make an impact with the people around them. And the more that we can challenge each other and be iron sharpening iron and and have accountability, the better our ministries will all become. We're going to all lift each other mm. up. And I, I think about like there are stories of you know rabbis forever ago, right? And they'd fight with each other basically. I mean, they'd yeah. argue doctrine. Mm-hmm. And they would all be fine with each other <laughs> afterwards. Mm-hmm. You know, they'd have mm-hmm. these wonderful debates. And Jesus was asked really specific theological questions, mm-hmm. and he was willing to answer them. Mm-hmm. And I think we have to have a good answer for everything. And that's that's another part of this. We're educating each other. We're learning from each other. We're growing with one another. Um, and hopefully we do what the church is called to do. We become a brighter light in our community mm-hmm. with one another. You know, you, gosh, you remind me of a story that I was just looking at this weekend. And it's, it's, it's just a few verses. We don't know much about Jesus' life from age 12 to age 30. The last thing we kind of hear about is childhood. Do you guys remember the story? It's remember when his parents forgot him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember? And they go back to the temple and they find him. And you remember what he's doing? He's teaching. teaching. Yeah. You know, we, we automatically go to he's teaching. But if you look just a couple verses in front of that, this is what it says. And I think this is a beautiful definition of exactly what you're describing, Rachel. It says that Jesus listened and asked questions. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And here's what's amazing. As he asked questions, it said that the rabbis were astonished mm-hmm. right. at his wisdom. But what he did first, here's what's cool. He didn't just go back blurt right. it out to him right. yeah. he says he listened right. and asked questions what a beautiful thing that is and what what a great example it is for you and i mm-hmm. you know i want to i wanted something else i wanted to read to you guys that i just read this morning god showed this to me and um it really i think it speaks profoundly to the heart of of the contributor program in in where the context is in this particular verse this is in daniel chapter 2 verse 20 through 23 and what what's happening here is is King Nebuchadnezzar has just had a dream, and he's called everybody forth to say, mm-hmm. what does my dream mean? And he doesn't just say, please tell me what my dream means. He says, if you are wrong, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> That's kind of... Pressure's on, man. Yeah. That's a little <laughs> yeah, bit of pressure. Right. <laughs> so you think Daniel maybe was feeling a little bit? Yeah. And so he goes before the Lord and says, please tell me. And God reveals it to him, and we know the story. He goes before Nebuchadnezzar, and he provides interpretation to the dream. Right. And then Daniel says this of God, and this is true for you and I, and I think this is foundational to anyone out there that's listening and saying, you know what, do I really, do I really have a perspective mm. that matters, mm. right? Is, is my pursuit of truth in this word, does it really matter? And the answer is yes. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a 12 year old. I don't care if you're 80 years old, a housewife or a CEO, wherever you find yourself, listen to these words of Daniel, because this is truth. This is what he said after God gave him the interpretation. He says, praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. Mm -hmm. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Get this, verse 22. He reveals deep and hidden Mm -hmm. things. He knows what lies in darkness and the light dwells in him. And this is what Daniel said. I thank you and I praise you. O God of my Father, for you have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what has been mm. asked of you. Mm. That's so good. And he says, you have made known to us the dreams of the king. Mm. So yeah. what's he saying? He's going, if, if you press in, the Father's promise is that he's going to give us deep and hidden treasure. Mm-hmm. And there's people out there that are seeking it out and are mm-hmm. finding it. Mm-hmm. And we want to provide them a platform to share. I want to know the deep and secret and hidden things of God. Oh, yes. I don't care who yeah. gets it. Just give it to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. It, you know, I was thinking as well, it's funny how the Spirit works. But in Romans 8, it says that he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit. For he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. But it's, it is pressing into what the Spirit is saying. And I want to get to what, what I want to talk about here or ask about is these thematic elements every month the theme that's going to be said that isn't just hey this is a really cool marketing idea 
right? This would be cool, you know, because it rhymes with May, and May is coming up, <laughs> right? But it's it's like, no, this is what the Spirit is saying. Yeah. This is the interpretation of that dream. Right. And, and so talk, if you would, about that, because you guys are going to be kind of setting direction and really pressing into the, into the heart of God on what He's saying each month that sort of sets the direction for all the contributors in terms of what they're going to what we're going to be rallying around, mm. right? And the, and the neat thing about that is, so we've assigned each month, like you say, a theme. Yeah. And I think uh, May is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. June is the valley, yeah. And what's mm. interesting about that is, with all of the different contributors, is it's so different mm -hmm. for each one. Like we were talking about what you're going to do for forgiveness, mm -hmm. and I would have never thought of it. And it just kind of sends you down this, I mean, as, as one of the curators for the, con the, the contributor section, it just makes me think differently and it makes mm. me move differently in the world. And, and you should expand on it. Too. Yeah. I mean, God put on my heart, this idea of forgiveness is the first theme. And it just, I just said, thought, Oh, forgiveness. It's a good one because we, we, I think, don't think enough enough about that and the mm -hmm. gift of forgiveness and there's so many different ways to look at what is forgiveness versus what is you know maybe being railroaded or you know how do we deal with forgiveness but I realized just yesterday that forgiveness is the antidote to cancel culture hmm. and the only way um, we're gonna end this vengeful cycle is to forgive people mm -hmm. to let go to love people the way that God has loved us. You know, my mom uh, reminded me of this story. There was this horrible event that happened years and years ago where um, just a crazy guy went in and ended up killing all of these children in this Amish school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the school didn't even have a telephone, so the teacher couldn't get to anybody. I mean, this guy ended up murdering all of these kids. And I think the normal response to that would be vengeance. Um, but these Amish parents of these kids uh, made meals for and went to the house of the man who had killed them wow. and took care of the family for days mm. and said, we know this doesn't belong to you. Your son did this and um, we forgive him. And we want to forgive. We want to forgive and, and took care of them. Ended the game, right? What Satan had intended to be a vengeful cycle and to create hatred and bitterness and confusion they saw something beyond the physical they mm -hmm. understood a spiritual principle that sometimes i think what evil wants to set in motion only someone who believes in the lord god's forgiveness can stop and it's going to be a route that we maybe never would have thought of as it's not natural <laughs> that's not a natural <laughs> response very true very but it true. ended whatever was going to take place next right it changed the game and I think that that's the power of forgiveness, and it's something that believers, um, I think if we explore that right now culturally and discuss what that really means, man, what a, what a testimony and a light right now. Mm. Absolutely. You know, um, just, just the earth as God made it, uh, plate tectonics constantly moving, the mm. earth is constantly shifting, the water cycle, seasons come, seasons change, there's constant forgiveness in nature. And a classic example to me of, of the opposite of that is the planet Venus where there's no plate tectonics and you have a runaway greenhouse effect and it's literally hell. Mm -hmm. It's 800 degrees, the pressure is crazy. So you have Earth that is just constantly forgiving mm -hmm. and it's sister planet Venus which is mm -hmm. the exact mirror opposite. And just, just like we read, you know, what, what Daniel recognized is he said, you're the one that controls the seasons. And that's yeah. that supernatural response mm -hmm. that, that you're referring to. You're right, in the natural, in the flesh, vengeance is gonna rise to the top every time. And the sad thing mm -hmm. about vengeance is there's never an end. Right. No, mm -hmm. it will never end. It's never an end. It will yeah. never stop the process of hatefulness and violence and anger and bitterness, which also is such a root of unforgiveness, right? And bitterness can just destroy your soul. Mm -hmm. And you know, I really feel like God is calling us to pull out those weeds, you know, to get rid of our bitterness and to be ready to do supernatural mm -hmm. actions. 
you know, I, I think about just the way that even forgiveness is expressed and the picture you just painted, right? Um, we can talk about, you, Jesus said, uh, you know, the Pharisees were upset with him because he was forgiving sins and also healing people. And he said, which is, it e- which is easier for me to say, rise and walk or your sins are forgiven? Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of the same thing, right. kind of a deal, right? So we can dive into that. We can, we can do a topic, uh, a discussion on that right now if we wanted to, right? Mm-hmm. Or there's a painter out there that could be painting the, you know, the first uh, kind of sprouting of the blossom of a tree in spring that could express that exact same thought, right? right? Or a song that could be sung Mm -hmm. that might communicate, Mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, That forgiveness topic in a different way. And so far, that's what we've seen. We've seen, um, at least with a couple things I've seen from A., already a variety of thoughts and ideas mm. oh, yeah. we've got a couple of songs lined up that are both very different different parts of forgiveness um and i i think i don't know if you guys know this i put on an event um well we did together years and years I ago was, i was there where we had <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> good to there. know, it's good to know you're invited, man. <laughs> yeah you got invited we, to that one we had different types of artists create different types of art around different songs and those song ideas. And so we had uh, someone create like short story fiction. We had like a physical art piece. We had paintings. We had all sorts of, we had video. And I felt like it was such a cool opportunity uh, to give that challenge to artists and thinkers too, to say, how deep can you go? Like what, yeah, your personal perspective on this particular topic and just to see what comes out of it. Mm. And to have pieces, we'll have, you know, you guys talk about being a museum. We'll have yeah. sections of a museum on different ideas. Totally. That is so it cool. Was, it was spectacular. There was, um, like, every every artist, like, really dove in, really thought. It was so cool. There was a painter. Um, he started with a black canvas and uh-huh. added light to it. Mm. So, oh man, <laughs> that just, wow. I just there's a lot. I have of, it yeah. hung up right above my uh, mm. my studio. Wow, and it's just the coolest idea. Well, that's you know what's what's I didn't know you did that. So what's what's amazing about that is is we're taking what you did in the physical right a physical mm-hmm. event and we're putting it into a virtual platform exactly. and that really describes beautifully what what this platform is all about. And so, you know, one of the ways someone might be asking, okay, how do I access this thing? How do I get into it? Where can it be found? Mm. Mm-hmm. And so. Part of it is already built. Uh, the other part is still yet to come. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit about that, the vision, the part that's already built. So our website, thepursuitonline.com, is 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 the first museum, if you will, yeah, archiving like location for uh, these materials. Mm-hmm. And we've, we we're adding a little bit at a time. Right now we have um, you know the written word out there with our blogs. We're gonna be adding over the next couple of weeks and months a lot of the video contributions that we've been receiving. And those video contributions are everything from a 30 second quick snippet on a a piece of content to maybe even up to two minutes, a little bit more elaboration, right? A little bit more depth. Mm -hmm. So we have that out there. We're gonna be adding songs, Mm -hmm. you mentioned. So I'm assuming, you tell me, vocalists, but are there going to be some just instrumentation, instrumentalists that will be playing as well? Yeah. Do you see that yeah. as well? Yeah, of course. As we move of course. forward, we'll have yeah. all sorts of, course. of things. We hope to have every form of expression. And what, what else is on the docket? Who else have you talked to that's out there working right now on something other than what I've already mentioned? So you other, mentioned other painters. Oh, painters. Dan- we have a dancer. Uh, we, there's a dancer. Very right, cool. Okay. Um, it start including. Um, I'm going to do some woodworking, too. Awesome. And then, like, we would like to get more videographers involved and graphic artists. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I like but there's that. really, I mean, there's really no limit, right, no, to no. what, what there's no limit. whatever can be expressed. Um, and we're just, you guys are going to shepherd them in this journey, right, and say, we're going to have this theme this month. You're going to shift it up and do something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, so right now, we're not in a position. Someone's out there going, I want to do this. I want to be a contributor. I want to jump in. They're not. Ne- we don't necessarily have the process mm-hmm. yet, quite yet. It's coming, so stay patient with us. Uh, we do. We'll have a process at some point for people that want to submit their stuff in for uh, consideration. Um, but let's talk about the piece that's not yet built yet, mm-hmm. that's coming in the future, as it relates to this Facebook community. Talk mm-hmm. about why we're doing that, 
why that's important, and what hopefully that begins to to rise up within the body of believers. Yeah. Well, I think that what we really envision for this is also to make all of this communal. And so if you're somebody that has a thought or an idea or a contribution, the great first place to go would be to a Facebook community or to post um, in response to something that we've put up, that one of our artists has put up, to just start engaging because Mm. that'll help us get to know you. Um, But also we'll start to have those conversations together. You know, no matter how many contributors we have, there's always more people out there who have wisdom, brilliance, ideas, thoughts, links, you know, all sorts of great (laughs) things that we want because we're trying to learn too and so I think we're just encouraged by this idea that we will actually become a community of believers together pursuing um, tough ideas and having tough conversations but doing it well Mm. right Right. Mm. and doing it out in the marketplace well and becoming a light in that community as well yeah to me me it's two things it's community and interaction Mm -hmm. yeah just yeah dive in and we want to hear from you yeah. Have, the, have the conversations yeah. challenge each other um you know we're we're all we're all brothers and sisters mm-hmm. mm. perspective is powerful yeah mm-hmm. right there's oh, yeah. a lot of wisdom that can be gained a lot of understanding that can be found there um and so we have we have the pursuit online.com somebody can go on there today mm-hmm. they can subscribe they can right there and, and begin to add your email stuff there and we're going to be notifying you as new material comes out we have our contributors that are out on the pursuit online.com you mm-hmm. can actually go in there today and we have several that have already have their material posted and you can mm-hmm. say you know what hey i like that guy's perspective or i like her perspective i want to follow them specifically and literally it's very simple you click on the follow button with underneath that contributor and you put your email address in there, and every time they drop new content, you're notified. Yeah. So you get to you get to tap into the people that you connect with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can go on Facebook right now. We have the pursuit page that we put all of our content on, so you can subscribe to that page and follow that page today. Mm-hmm. Soon the community will come. Right. That'll be That's a place right. where everyone can begin to interact within that, mm-hmm. like you just mentioned. Um, what else am I missing? It, well, let me just add to that real quick as well. We're not looking for like vanity metrics or way to go, guys. Now, share the love. We love that, right? You know, with with all the contributors and and all the stuff that we're putting out there. But challenge, what do you think about this? Have you considered, like when you said the word, or maybe Rachel, you did, engage. It's not just, you know, like and subscribe. We do want that. Mm -hmm. But we want, you know, some actual like, have you considered dot 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 Mm. sort of comments right right? Mm -hmm. like that's what when you say engage and tough conversations and hard topics Mm. yeah these are all in bounds and not off limits are they no talk talk about what's relevant now there's a lot going on and i'm sure i mean we do have some community standards (laughs) (laughs) for sure (laughs) we'll be monitoring that i didn't mean to yeah yeah. but i (laughs) think one of the the coolest things that can happen out of this is sincerity and authenticity there it is when you're sincere and you're authentic instead of it you know degrading into name calling again believers right followers of christ we can do this really well we've already been empowered with the spirit of truth right and sincerity and authenticity and mm. um, you know, I think the challenge is instead of engaging with your emotion, mm-hmm. engage with your spirit and with your intellect, you know, and share what you're learning and be ready to learn. Because I think there are some people out there. I know with the contributors, they teach, right? Mm-hmm. They've got something amazing. So um, you know, well bring your authentic self. Yeah, well said. Well that said. Great. Yeah. Well, we're excited. You guys have taken on the leadership responsibility of, so of the contributor exciting. ministry, and I, I just know it's going to be incredible. So I can't wait to see what. God is in and through you guys, and so yeah, thank yeah. you for yeah. joining the team. Yeah. We're excited. Yeah. We're already getting our forgiveness uh, podcast topics lined up to fall yeah. in line, man. Mm-hmm. We're part of this thing. We're uh, right. contributors <laughs> just like all of them. That's right. I, we are contributors. We've got a lot to talk about as it relates to forgiveness. Yeah. So that's we'll a, take that that's off a great line first and topic. Yeah. heal first, and then, uh, <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then you grow, right? I, I, like, I like the transition of things because you forgive, and then you go into the valley. That's when ah, you that's your right. hands in the nice dirt. Nice transition. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Oh, man. Are you guys just going to be talking about uh, how angry you are at each other? And <laughs> yeah, we, about how you we can, tend to. How you can forgive each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> you you, you want to you go there right now? <laughs> we can go there right now if you want to. You, you know what? Let's just cut these cameras. <laughs> I feel like maybe you guys should just talk, talk it out. Just talk, work it out right here. Talk it out. Right in front of everybody. We're not here. Hey. Well, everybody, thank you again for joining us on The Pursuit, and we will see you next time. 